everyone to this meeting uh, organized by the PC3 uh, Foreign Security Policy of, uh, of UEF and PC5 Digital Climate and Biodiversity. We're going to investigate uh, the challenges imposed by artificial intelligence, cybersecurity on democracy. And actually, we have the pleasure to have together with us the a member of the European Parliament, Brando Bonifay, uh, former member of Parliament, Eva Lichtenberger, and Vice President of UF Austria, and Knut uh, Sande, uh, from the member of the Executive Board of Chef Europe. We actually investigate three main aspects, actually, regarding the personal liberties, uh, the internal security, and uh, challenges imposed by uh, these new challenges by, uh, on international security that are actually created concern uh, uh, in particular after after the elections american elections 2016 with uh, uh, with elections of donald trump but also during the propaganda attacks leader linked on russia initiative russian war russian invasion to ukraine i want to uh, left the floor immediately to uh Brando Benefei, we are uh, grateful for his presence here and thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Thanks to the UEF. Uh, I see many familiar faces. Uh, thanks for this uh, opportunity. Well, in fact, uh, uh, as you see, I'm on a train going to a meeting about the AI Act in Turin. Today I was in Milan, tomorrow I will be again in Milan, then in Japan. For all this, it's really the moment where everyone wants to talk about this topic. And I think we really need to talk about this also from a federalist perspective. I want to start on this point because I try to bring this in in all the discussions that I'm having. Um, while we finalize the trilogue negotiations on this important artificial intelligence regulation in the European Union that are ongoing. We had a trilogue a few days ago and we will have a new one by the end of October. As you all know, the trilogue is the moment when we negotiate as part Mm -hmm. with the European Commission as a so-called honest broker. Um, can you hear me fine? Yeah. Can you hear me fine? Okay. Um, so I was saying that it's it's going to be... Uh, so um, it's going to be uh, again at the end of October that we have um, a, a new trilogue that will uh, continue there negotiations. But as I said earlier, I think it's important that before we look at the issue of the regulation and its implications, um, we also consider a more federalist point of view, which I think is crucial. And I try to bring that in, as I was mentioning earlier, during all the debates about AI. And I mean the fact that with the rules that we are discussing, that we are proposing. We are uh, trying to influence the debate also in the rest of the world, because we are proposing a model for AI regulation that tries to mitigate risks and uh, the opportunities uh, to build uh, a common language with the rest of the world in terms of um, risk uh, reduction um, uh, schemes that are uh, the basis of the regulation. Um, and also we are trying to build uh, um, uh, common definitions, for example, of the definition of AI system. Um, but um, also we need to consider that there is a political issue that if we want to be competitive on the issue of AI, I think it's crucial that we are able to, um, um, to um, 
also have more political unity of our union. We really need to talk about this because today the European Union is not politically ready to deal with the competition on AI with China and US because we have a capital market that is uh, fragmented. We have too many fragmented investments. Uh, we have research programs that are not uh, united enough. So we need to bring the federalist aspect also of the unity of the effort around the development of AI that needs federal instruments uh, for the European Union. Otherwise, we will try to lead in the debate on the rules, which is also important. But it will not be sufficient to compete because we need for our model on AI, that is a human-centric, trust-based model based on reduction of risks and high degree of uh, um, protection for human rights, um, will not be able to uh, work in a, in a world where we risk losing the technological competition. So I wanted to bring this on the table because I, I think we really need to bring this into focus, that we need investment, research, capital markets, uh, um, a, 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 an investment also on a, a federal evolution for AI purpose. Um, I, I suggest, uh, as I will be getting down, luckily, from the train, uh, not too late from now, that maybe we have a round, so I try to bring a, a, a point on the table, but then I can uh, speak again later after I'm uh, on a more stable connection. Sorry for this, but the train uh, I, it was very late, and so I, I should have been already down. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brando, for your this your first run actually on this of this event. Thank you for your very important points you raised. I want to uh, give the floor immediately to Ms. Eva uh, Lichtenberger, former MEP and West, uh, Austria Vice President. Yeah, that's good. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Brando. I, I share your problems with the train, so <laughs> I can understand very well what what is happening. Um, I just want to connect what you were saying on the international and global competition, which is uh, linked to artificial intelligence and not only on that. Um, um, I was part of the SEPS working group uh, from nine, uh, 2017 to 18. Uh, where we try to prepare some proposals for the commission then. And there, this was, of course, also one of the important topics that uh, we were touching upon. And um, um, here, um, I think it is very important to mention one thing. If Europe wants to compete, we have to compete on our own terms, on our own strength. Uh, because um, we are not those who are fast and uh, put things on the market without having them tested uh, uh, carefully. Uh, we want a human-centered artificial intelligence, which could also then bring back trust into uh, a digital world, which is mm, has been lost a little bit within the last years and the last year's debates. Um, and furthermore, I fully agree that we need some uh, more instruments. Um, in this um, SEPS uh, working group, uh, we had the proposal on the table, and I think this would be a very uh, valid one, that we should focus um, also on, um, as you said, uh, to coordinate better our uh, research programs to create something like the CERN in Geneva for artificial intelligence. And with all the methods, uh, methods we now have, we easily could create kind of virtual CERN 
on this whole issue, like it is for particles and so on and so on, and the research in it. This is the whole of Europe taking part in it. And the same should be on a virtual basis, maybe, uh, for uh, artificial intelligence to uh, get the development right. This was a proposal this, which I really appreciated very much. And I think it would really make sense um, to, to uh, go further in that way. Is this still part of the debate, Brando? Mando? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, now I hear you. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I lost your last phrase. What was the, the question? We want uh, to the know question what was, the debate, sorry? Is, is, is the point on creating kind of virtual CERN um, uh, still in the debate on the European Parliament or not? A, a virtual servant? Uh, CERN, uh, the the uh, uh, CERN in uh, Genova. Ah, a virtual CERN. Ah, the CERN. The, okay, this okay, okay, okay. The 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 physics laboratory. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um. Well, uh, this is um referred to in the regulation, but this is not crucial to be honest because it cannot be done anyway with the regulation. Um, and in fact, uh, yes. I, I think, yeah, I, I think you also refer to another document. You refer We lost you. About this point. Uh, uh, it's difficult to understand you. You are interrupted all the time. European I don't know. CERN. But, yeah. that's, but that's, 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 but that's a political document. So to be frank, it's not really significant. I think that we just say it should be there, but there is no political will at the moment. Ah. As I said, we left the basic. Uh, but yes, the parliament has this view, and it was expressed clearly uh, also in the political document of the study committee that we had before working on the artificial. Yeah. I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I think this would be a very important point also to put forward uh, a better coordination of uh, horizon uh, um, programs and things like that, because only then we can coordinate in this moment when things are developed. If we wait and try to coordinate later on, we always will get problems. So this would be, in my point of view, one of the cru uh, crucial issues to... Uh, uh, to do so. Uh, but um, I just wanted to shed, shed a light a little bit on um, what has been uh, the original issues uh, when the debate about the um, artificial intelligence was started. Um, I think that uh, now uh, in presence, we watch... Um, something that I really uh, see problematic because we are talking in the public debate, especially uh, a lot about um, big dyst uh, dystop uh, dystopias, um, like singularity, like um, mankind, we lose out on machines and things like that and its consequences. Um, but this is... Um, obscuring a little bit the real developments that we actually can watch. Um, and I think um, maybe there is also some intention behind it because, uh, coming out of um, uh, the big uh, companies um, showing that the whole issue of artificial intelligence is uh, some kind of inevitability. So it will come whatever we do, so that people lean back, do not care anymore um, about 
the things that are happening right now because we already have those um, elements of artificial intelligence present, especially since uh, chat GPT was presented. Um, we have it in search machines. We have it in self-learning systems, which are already existing. We have it in the systematic biases coming uh, out of those uh, attempts of uh, 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 crime prediction and things like that. Um, and um, so, what you see is that we have a lack of political overview of the present tendencies in the whole process. And as you see, the mistrust in those developments is growing. And this is, of course, a very problematic issue. Um, because, um, of course, artificial intelligence could do a lot for us. We have search machines, we have automated translation, we have personalized systems uh, in education already on the table, but not really in use. We uh, could get less traffic incidents if we would have um, more uh, automated systems within the cars. And we also could, uh, could execute kind of environmental control, of, especially for energy saving. But the mistrust comes, in my point of view, out of search machines, for example, collect and use personal data. Um, far away from any regulation. Automated translation still needs a human oversight. Uh, the personalized system in education are not safe. They are storing negative results, which could then be fatal for the further career of someone. And um, uh, when it comes to automated car, the debates now a little bit uh, calm down because uh, liability problems are not yet um, uh, solved. And uh, <clears throat> if it comes to, to environmental issues, energy saving um, on the one hand would be possible, but what we see is an enormous energy consumption in electronic systems. So this creates, of course, kind of mistrust. And um, uh, even if um, in other things, uh, artificial intelligence could be very useful for us, um, for the uh, ecological transformation, uh, uh, creating, let's say, early warning systems or so, uh, information sites for um, uh, citizens, online trainings for catastrophes and things like that. But this is still in the making. Um, the European Parliament already uh, in 2016, 17, 18 was addressing the important questions linked to um, uh, artificial intelligence, especially when it came to the pre precautionary princi uh, principle and ethics in the making of uh, artificial um, uh, systems, uh, intelligent systems. Um, what is, in my point of view, a bit um, underestimated is the whole thing about um, augmenting human capacities. We now see already the first uh, traces of human use, of a military use of the instruments like that. And this, of course, raises major concerns because this would give a very new element within warfare, which hardly can be solved uh, with the normal diplomatic uh, uh, procedures that we have. Um, still, uh, we see that uh, the, the limits for biometrics is a theoretical question. It has become a theoretical question because in, in some uh, member states, the numbers of cameras in public sphere is, is has grown enormously. And um, what can be done and what is done with those systems is still not really on the table and um, um, doesn't gain the importance that uh, uh, it would need. Uh, because um, I one point is important. Um, there's always um, the whole thing about responsibilities and responsible artificial intelligence, like it is also in the texts uh, of the Parliament and the Commission. Uh, but um, 
as a, an expert that we were hearing was saying, um, Mr. Kritikos, uh, he said, if you want responsible systems, start with responsible humans. And this is still uh, not in the oversight what really uh, has to be done. And um, I fear that there is a lot of things to do still. Uh, what we already now watch and would, uh, uh, what would really mm, become a problem in the, uh, in the future is, um, of course, people mistrust step by step uh, more and more. Um, uh, social media and information coming from media. But if you look, for example, in medicine, in the era, uh, in the era uh, uh, of medicine, you see tendencies that really make you a little bit, um, uh, with, 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 uh, which brings a little bit of irritation. Um, if a problem, uh, AI, um, and uh, um, if a problem, uh, if a program suggests an opinion, a certain opinion, and the human decision decision maker. For example, the, the 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 medical doctor uh, has another one. Who dares, out of liability problems and legal problems, who dares then to act against the outcome of a computer program? And here, uh, I think the legal committee would have to think this over because this is a very dramatic thing. Um, medical doctors usually develop kind of um, sensitivity for certain, uh, for certain problems. But um, if the computer contradicts, what should they do? And this, will, uh, this is only one of a lot of examples that uh, could um, uh, be on the table then. Um, I think um, you will uh, then um, discuss the whole problems connection uh, connected with uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, in depth um, out of the point of view of the European Parliament uh, from right now. Uh, but um, what I think is very important, uh, as we said, a trustworthy um, artificial intelligence should be in the center, that's clear. This would be the strength of the European Union. This is something that neither the US nor China would ever do. But I think uh, we can give back trust, uh, trust or, or, um, uh, for the population in the decision-making processes if we, really, if we really manage to come to that point. Um, I just uh, wanted um, to stress also that this could be the unique selling point, the USB of the European Union, confronted with the other entities on the world when it comes to artificial intelligence. But still, I do not know if those shortcomings are corrected um, reading the the texts, um, I do not know the the the, the very last um, um, uh, texts. I do not know, but uh, as far as I followed, um, it um, in my point of view, the um, AI decision is focusing a little bit too much only on the high risk AI, and not on possible board um, on possible. Um, uh, border cases, which then borderline cases, which um, would in summing up uh, some of the elements would would then bring um, uh, a very different point of view. Uh, for example, the whole thing about um, Twitter and um, the, the policy um, done by uh, Musk, uh, you saw very much, um, uh, you saw very well how easily um uh, systems can be changed from one point from one uh, minute to the other and then lose out on uh the elements that really could um 
uh, could uh, could um, be of positive effect. We have, um, in my point of view, still a little bit um, um, uh, some questions that for me are still a bit open, like um, which ethical code should um, uh, should should um, uh, systems follow on. And um, is a precautionary principle really incorporated clearly in the procedures? And um, do we follow an ins insurance uh, concerning liability issues, uh, an insurance princip uh, principle, or how do we see that right now? How, how does the parliament see this right now? And um, the last thing is uh, risk assessment is a little bit um, 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 definite, it's not defined um, precisely enough. Uh, can I, I, can I, I saw, yeah, yeah, please. Now, can I comment a bit on the things you said? Because they are yeah. all very interesting. But, but to be honest, uh, I need to be very frank uh, that uh, we, to, to, to get where uh, we are in the sense that you said that uh, it's not enough. For example, on the high risk, uh, we concentrate too much on that. Uh, and also the issue of the risk assessment, um, how it is done, how it is uh, limiting, etc. But the fact is that uh, the majority of the European Parliament is uh, siderally far from what you're saying. I mean, we, 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 we had to fight crazily to get close to where you say and to have a text that we are using now to negotiate with the government that is yeah. tackling partially the problems you mentioned, which are all real. And I know very well all the points you raised. We mm -hmm. tried to amend partially on this but fighting against a majority of the European Parliament, which, as rapporteur, I had to play a game of dividing this majority that, if together, would have a very, very light regulation in place. If I remember correctly, colleague, you were a Green member. Uh, I mean, SND and Greens were quite in line with the um, uh, criticism that you also raised, but we are a minority in parliament. <laughs> so no, no. it was very <laughs> difficult to, in fact, uh, uh, for example, on the generative AI, which is clearly the, the frontier, uh, the most mm -hmm. important point now, because it affects millions of people already. Uh, they use uh, ChatGPT and MidJourney, etc. Well, the majority of parliament was against any norms, just the SND, Greens, and GUE. Uh, also, all the liberals, all the liberals were against. Then the things have changed after the, the, the phenomenon exploded and there was a political push to deal with it. And so at least the liberals moved and so we could uh, go on otherwise there was no majority to even uh, consider a transparency framework for generative ai that is in line with what the big tech has uh, declared to be willing to do with the president biden so with voluntary yeah. commitment so mm -hmm. i what I, I i must say is that there is in the European Parliament, uh, today already, I don't know after the next election, but today, a majority that trusts uh, the idea that we need to leave the market of the developers uh, do their part and that we should instead reduce the high risk areas and reduce the number of systems affected by the regulation. Just to give okay. you an idea, because otherwise yeah, we, yeah, we, we yeah. do not... Uh, um, uh, collocate our discussion in the reality of the of the work of the institutions, which is yeah. which is going which is which is 
which was, to be frank, a, a matter of resisting a dismissive attitude because it's, it's easily foundable, the, to, it's easy to find declarations of uh, colleagues from EPP that have publicly said we do not need an AI regulation. We should stick to some adjustments to GDPR and other things. So it was yeah, uh, the, yeah, the, that was yeah. their position public. So, yeah, uh, I yeah. mean, it was very difficult to get uh, through this, <laughs> but to be, to the, yeah. But then now we, uh, ha I have to say that the negotiations that we are having are also pushed by a public opinion interest that is growing and an attention that is, to be honest, only useful and helpful. Because I noticed that as more the debate uh, publicly grows, the more we can also um, confront with the lack of arguments that sometimes is there, but simply when there is no public exposure, they, I mean, people could just say it's like that without explanation. Now it's difficult yeah. to not explain yeah. why you do not want any rule for a chat GPT. So it's, yeah. uh, it's, 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 it, it was easier before. It was until January, as I told you, a majority of the European Parliament simply said we should let them develop and not put rules, period. Yeah. So yeah. Now, now things have yeah. changed. Things have changed. Uh -huh. And this also shows that things can change also because there is an informed public debate that also influences the, uh -huh. the, the discussions. Uh, thank you very much. No, I didn't want to criticize uh, the procedures because I know very well. I have been in so many yeah. trialogues. That yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no I know, how, but the problem is not the works. trialogue in this case. Yeah, the yeah, problem I know. is not the trialogue, it's the majority in parliament that was against right. the yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know you have to, to fight for every comma. This, this is always the case. So. <laughs> I know it very well, and it's not a criticizing, but it is also to show a little bit how things develop and also change a little bit the focuses. And I know and I followed also up how difficult it is and how difficult it was um, to go against this majority that says, oh, phew, I don't want to touch this, let them develop the things. And if they are good on the market, they are well and, and uh, well done. And, uh, and uh, here the whole thing ends. I know, I know the difficulties and I know how uh, problematic it is. I was uh, part also of the civil society group uh, within the COFE, uh, the Conference for the Future of Europe. And um, there, um, I think there was a very strong impact also um, from, from this. Uh, this was a good group, a group that worked very well and worked very intensely. And I think um, what I see, but there's nothing to do, I think, um, uh, in, in anymore. It has never been possible. Um, I think one of the biggest um, problems will be that there is no regulation for military uses. I think this is still uh, yeah. excluded, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, but absolutely, yeah. but that's also due to the limits of our treaties. But I, yes, I, I know. also, I know. But I yeah. also, but I also need to add that we are, we are fighting strongly against the idea that the governments are proposing of a lot of exclusion for national security to the rules. I they know. are trying to put a lot of exceptions to the right. rules we have put in place for yeah. data yeah. data appropriateness data governance cyber security environmental impact human yeah. oversight so the may all the requirements that we are putting in place for especially high risk applications the governments are proposing to have very large exceptions for national security reasons which i think are a disaster and luckily on this point the european commission which is not very helpful often to be frank um it, it has been on our side in uh, uh saying that this request from the governments is 
uh, also extremely problematic from a purely legal point of view. Yeah, right. Absolutely. But I, I, I really wanted to give you <laughs> also to the fellow <laughs> friends of, of uh, the yeah. UEF the fact that this is not uh, um, like, a, a, how can I say, a, 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 not just a simple thing. You all know it's not simple, but it's not that there is um, a, a common understanding that we need oh. to... to there is no common understanding. There is a big fight where huge economic interests are fighting. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. This needs to be oh, to yeah. be said clearly. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, 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 uh -huh. um, no, I just, uh, I just wanted. Uh, this is why I. Already been... Huh? And no, no, there's I... someone who hasn't switched off the the. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I I think uh, it's it's fairly clear that uh, there are also treaty restrictions when it comes to foreign policy and and military issues. That's clear. But um, I mentioned it because it was a very strong point without the civil society convention um, that this should be um, uh, that this should should be regulated in a sense. I do not see any possibility for the European Union. Nevertheless, it would be necessary because we are coming in the same dilemma by like landmines or, or nuclear weapons and things like that uh, when it comes to automated drones. Uh, as we know, the Turkish drones are already uh, able to um, individualize um, their attacks and things like that. So, mm, and these are used in the Ukra uh, Ukrainian war. So, mm, I think I, do I, not I, think I, 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 I think this needs to be dealt with on another level, the yes, level of international right. law of AI, yeah. which is something yeah, yeah, the EU yeah. is dealing with, but this cannot be solved in the AI Act, in my opinion. Absolutely, that's clear. And this that's is why yeah. that this, for example, could be put also on the level of the um, um, global federalists, um, so that uh, maybe in this sense we could be we could set an initiative also to influence or, or to make a common uh, uh, strat uh, strategic uh, meeting on this. Uh, I know this is uh, on European level never enough and things like that, but. Um, uh, it would be worth it to discuss this because this is, of course, uh, a step to a future where we will face challenges that we nowadays not even can imagine. So I think this is an important point. This has had nothing to do with the AI regulation in the European Parliament because this is another pair of shoes. But um, in the end, this would be one of the most important things. And I thank you very much for what you told us about the procedures in 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 C B in the with uh, in the negotiations with the Council or uh, also with um, with the majority in the European Parliament. It's very important for us to know uh, where the resistance are sitting and. Uh, uh, it seems to me it's always the same group, <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you. I think thank you. I think um, we should try to focus on that. And I want to pick up one uh, last point, which I really find important when it comes to national security issues, when it comes to catastrophes, like we already watched this summer. Don't uh, don't have illusions on that. Um, we have a lot of critical infrastructure in Europe. This is clear. We have um, means to secure the big ones. But if you, for example, look at um, the systems that are running in hospitals, in energy providers, and so on and so on, on national state level, you see an enormous deficit. And this is one thing that I really want to stress. We as federalists should on every level, be it on national state level, be it, be it on European level, try first to watch the implementation when the IA Act um, then is finished and also the other regulations connected to it, 
the implementation in member states, how this is done. This is really important because we sometimes forget about that. And the second point is our SMEs and our public infrastructures, especially those on um, small and medium-sized level, need a group of experts, need help, need money whatsoever to adjust their systems on the new threats that we are facing. Uh, because cyber attacks do not go to the big hospital, for, for example. They go to the medium ones. They do not attack big, big cities, but small cities. So I think what we should go for is um, stress that these entities need our assistance, be it a group of experts, be it money, whatsoever, to adjust their systems to the present needs that we have right now. I think this is very important, and I think it would be a good thing for our uh, uh, federalist groups in the European uh, uh, um, uh, states, uh, member states, and the European Union itself to care for on that level. Okay. Thank you, Eva, for your contribution. I want to uh, share the, the invitation to, to reflect on it to our friends Knut. Thank you to be here. Thank you very much and thank you for the invite. Greetings from Oslo tonight. Um, I will try to bring some perspectives as a young person, as a member of Jeff Europe and thus a federalist, and also I work with uh, data protection, so maybe also something from there. Um, many things have been said already, so I will try not to repeat too many things, uh, but I think this one very important keyword in all of this is trust, of course, um, while making this AI act, but also there are many other different steps that have to be taken at the same time, because the current technological development is not waiting for us to get this right. It is happening all the time. And it was interesting to hear what you said, um, uh, Brando, about uh, there not being this much awareness about this just a year ago uh, among MEPs, for example, and that more people now are in favor of an AI Act, which is good. But this also, in my opinion, is because we were not that much aware of what AI can do one year ago. This must be around when ChatGPT really came with new um, things that could not be done before. And after what I read this week uh, with my phone and the next version of ChatGPT, I can now take a picture of food and then ask for the in uh, ingredients and how you cook it. Uh, I can take a picture of a building and ask where is this building located, etc. Um, and this is a big leap for compared to just one year ago. So it's really happening, a rapid uh, change here. And um, I assume that the general population is um, using, are using these platforms, but particularly young people. And we don't know a world without it because this is what we have uh, grown up with. Um, this is what we now use for uh, tasks at school, university, even social media, now that we have artificial uh, intelligence on Snapchat. Um, and I assume they will also put it more into other social media, such as Facebook and or Meta and Twitter. And we don't know what the next steps there are, but they will come certainly. So this is something to truly be aware of. At the same time, um, Jeff Europe, we, we have a, also a resolution on this, so feel free to read it if you haven't already on calling for an ethical and uh, efficient EU policy framework on artificial intelligence uh, we adopted last year. Uh, and we do absolutely see the potential in these new technologies because they can also bring a lot of good things. But we have to remember that we live in uh, democratic societies. Uh, we want a federal way to um, to regulate this. But at the same time, we have to, of course, remember the shared values within the European Union um, and not um, open for artificial intelligence in a way that uh, will danger these shared values or directly violate them. That is very important. So we have to ask ourselves a few questions. How can we make artificial intelligence safe? How can we trust it? Uh, because if we don't have the trust there, then people will also lose more trust in democracy. Um, and we also need democracy to be able to 
uh, regulate this because we have to show that it's actually possible through democracy to make this difference. Otherwise, people might also lose more trust in democracy if they see that we can't really uh, solve it, we can't do it in time, it's inefficient. Uh, and then people might see that uh, other more authoritarian regimes might come up with quicker solutions to, to these questions or actually have some regulations. Um, but there is one more thing that we have to think about, and that is not only the regulation, but also how to enforce it. Uh, when it comes to data protection, we have a GDPR, and that is very good. And I work a lot with this. Um, I work in the Norwegian Data Protection Authority, but that's not why I speak here today. Um, and we have uh, fined Meta recently uh, for not following up GDPR. But the problem is that it takes so long to actually do this. This case has been going on in total for five years or six years since the very beginning of the GDPR when it um, when it entered into force. Um, and if you tell people, okay, we will need a few years to get this regulation right, and then it will take five or 10 years in front of the courts to actually uh, make sure that you, you enforce it, <laughs> then it's very difficult to do it right. So it is important to have some prioritations. Um, maybe go for the big fish first, um, but also have many different uh, processes going on at the same time. So the enforcement, that is something very important that I think we should also discuss a bit further today, how we can actually make it enforced and not only talk a lot about it and have some nice rules that companies find a way to go around. Um, I also wanted to add something on what was said. Um, on, on Well, I can take the legal vacuum first, because what we in Jeff Europe believe is that there is a clear legal vacuum here today on many different areas, such as the liability that was already mentioned and the responsibility. Where do you put it um, for if malfunction happen? But also we need a clear ethical framework for the use of it. Um, uh, we need a um, framework for harmful action, omission and other damages. And this is the way Europe can really show that we can um build a better regulation we can uh, be an alternative to what they do in for example china or in america um because today we're definitely lagging behind these others and it doesn't have to be this way uh, but we have to hurry up not make it too complicated for our companies because then they might leave or prioritize innovation in other places um but it is, about, it is about finding the balance between having some regulation here um, and also open for innovation so that these can go hand in hand and we can have European competitors on the market and not as we see in other areas, for example, social media only have American giants. Uh, this is not the way we want to go. Um, yeah, so I will... Try not to repeat everything that also was said because you said a little bit more things um, already. But there is one thing I also wanted to add here, and that is when it comes to actually the enforcement of these rules, we need ways that citizens can quickly and unbureaucratically file complaints when a rule is broken and a mechanism to actually follow that up. Um, because it doesn't help that you as a citizen have a lot of rights when you cannot really uh, have access to them and they will not be followed up unless you have a lot of money or um, you know the right people etc um, so this is an important point um, and then there was also something about European elections so I will end on that or upcoming elections um, we have elections both in the EU and in the US next year and these are important elections. And we already saw back in the past in different parts, uh, different elections that uh, in the past that we had troubles with fake news. And this will still be a problem. We have the logarithms knowing us better than we might do ourselves. Um, the fine that um, uh, the Norwegian Data Protection Agency gave to Meta was for Facebook tracking users for ads. And this is a huge problem. And what can happen when social media platforms track their users for ads and then they sell them for political advice, advertisement, for example, um, either directly but also indirectly because they know exactly what message to, to sell to people. So this is difficult. And also have in mind that most young people today, they get their news through social media 
um, not necessarily the the old fashioned um, news broadcast things. Um, and then it's even more difficult to make sure that um, artificial intelligence is not messing with us, for example. Uh, so these are some really big challenges that we need to find answers to. I don't have all of the answers, but I wanted to bring this up because for young people, if we now have elections and then we can't trust anything on social media, but that is where we get our information from, it will crush the trust also to democracy if we can't find a way to live with the technology that already exists. Thank you so much, Knut, for your very, uh, very interesting contribution. And I think we raised many, many points in this meeting. Um, I want to leave the floor to, uh, to the debate, but actually we saw how could be important a nice circulation on artificial intelligence uh, on many things. Uh, on many situations to uh, to protect uh, to protect personal liberties, but also to allow the people and the, the, the enterprises and the technologies to to uh, to uh, have a sustainable uh, sustainable growth for for uh, for the for the sake of European people, uh, etc. But also, it's important to uh, to say that this regulation, this attempt made. Uh, it's really important to be a landmark for regulation in other parts of the world. And that is something we should really pay attention to. So that's important uh, for many, many reasons. And also we have the international security dimension. That is a political one that cannot be just done with a regulation, but with a pattern of, regula pattern of, of, of laws and regulations and bylaws and that. And also, it's very important in this matters and ethical views on that. Uh, philosophy uh, developed in uh, even since the 80s, the uh, hypothesis of artificial intelligence and ethical understanding and ethical questions of it. In many times, uh, due to the fact university research is far from, from the reality, uh, I should say, for uh, our people, we lost track of past work on that. Uh, we need to recuperate and make it new, but actually that is a, a matter that really encompass reflections of lawmakers, uh, society, enterprises, and any stakeholders, stakeholders on it. So I leave the floor to anyone who want to raise a question, or I ask to the um, speakers to add. Yeah, yes, I just Andrew. want Carlo to ask to add very quickly because I already talked a lot. But because, unfortunately, as I said uh, um, before, I can't uh, stay much more time. I know there is still a little time, but I, I, I have another uh, commitment. But I, I want to just uh, try to answer, and then there will be more debate, I can imagine, and other answers from other speakers. But uh, answer on what Knut was saying, which I also have to say was very, very I think on the point, on the most important issues. Um, well, on the disinformation and the trust on the social media, well, we have Digital Services Act in place, which will do something. But on the AI part, uh, the AI Act will not be there. Uh, what we can consider to be there, which will help, for example, depends on what we will put in the final text, but could help against the, the mass uh, um, development of uh, deep fakes to influence elections is the uh, so-called voluntary compliance. Uh, we are uh, building a framework, uh, so-called AI Pact, uh, that the European Commission will launch in a few weeks, that will uh, support and, and encourage voluntary compliance by um, uh, businesses, um, uh, institutions, uh, that develop or use AI to already comply with the regulation even before its entry into force. Because the entry into force will take more time, one year and a half, as less two years, depends on where we land in the negotiations. But this means that um, it, will, it will take time. So we want voluntary compliance to be encouraged and in place, especially for those 
systems that influence elections. It has been explicitly said that social media and elections in general, democratic processes, we want to encourage the systems that deal with that to be compliant before. Uh, and then the enf enforcement, uh, uh, governance and enforcement. This topic was raised, I think it's crucial. And it was explained why already very well. Um, and I think this is very important that we um, have, and that's what the parliament has been doing. We have a, a system of national supervisory authorities that are able to deal with the enforcement and a European office of the AI that has enough uh, uh, teeth to uh, act and not just a, a, a very light coordination of national authority. So this is obviously a complex topic. It could require more time for details, but I just wanted to say that we, are ve we, we have very clear that the governance is uh, an enforcement that it uh, entails is crucial. In fact, if I can tell you very briefly to conclude which are the four areas that are mostly uh, contentious with the, with the governments today are the definition of the high risk and the, um, how we, we uh, uh, put into the basket of the high risk a system and its use, because that's crucial. Because if you are out of the high risk area, then you have a, a lot less regulation. So this is the, the crucial uh, point. Um, of these of these all text, uh, and then uh, the, the 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 forbiddals, the what is forbidden because we have pushed a lot against the uh, biometric uh, uh, real time uh, uh, surveillance uh, 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 in public spaces, but also predictive policing, also emotion recognition in some of the context. Uh, so what is forbidden? Then the generative AI, which I already mentioned, and the governance and enforcement. These, for sure, are the four most important areas of the negotiations ongoing. So uh, just to say that I totally uh, share what Knut was saying on the enforcement. Um, thank you, and uh, I hope we can continue this discussion because, as I told you, um, I feel that this has such a, gr a big federalist content. I've been trying to push this in all debates uh, I'm having everywhere that the federalist issue, the building of the federation is crucial to be able to deal with AI. Otherwise, we are only declaratory rule makers, but not really effective in various aspects. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you so Bye. much, Rando. Thank you. Thank you for your very important contribution. Um, I want to invite uh, some other colleagues or speakers to raise some points. Uh, at points one, I want to ask you uh, actually myself. Um, the, the, the point of safety of democracy and democratic process has been one of the central. Uh, do you think we are uh, following the pace with technology, uh, with our national and international regulations. Eva. Um, well, um, if I may answer, I think um, uh, the chat GPT um, showed us how far away we are uh, already. Um, but I mean, this is normal. You can't regulate before something exists. You only can regulate if you can a little bit foresee what is coming and what is oncoming. But um, um, to safeguard democratic processes, um, I think this compliance mechanism that um, Brando described could be a help. This uh, could make sure that at least um, there would be some social media and whatsoever um, that already implement things like that, and they get kind of um, um, a kind of, of of yes from the European Union, so that uh, uh, people know what they can trust in and what um, is a little bit out of trust era. Yeah, uh, I think for the safeguarding of these processes, it's crucial because one thing is clear with the new 
issues now available. They have existed already, but uh, they were not available for the broad public. Um, uh, deep fakes are as easily to make that even some naive users can make it with a little bit, a little bit of advice. And this really makes every campaign very difficult. Imagine a federalist campaign where some of our exponents then are deep faked uh, in, in a speech that would mean the opposite of what we usually say. So it would really be a critical issue and it needs all of us also to have safeguards, to have warning mechanisms to the others to advise when things like that happen. So now civil society must first, um, for first, um, what I think, um, assure that before the election, this regulation is done even if it's not what we thought that it could be, but it must be in place. So then it can be improved. And the second point is we not only have to uh, safeguard um, uh, the, the process itself, but also the implementation in member states. So all our national groups have to watch out how these laws made on European level then are realized on national level, but because this uh, already before enforcement make a difference. We saw it with Ireland and the uh, um, uh, data protection. They simply didn't uh, put any stuff in. So you could make a complaint, but it was never followed up. So I think the implementation process is the first that we as federalists have to watch upon also in our member states. Thank you, Eva. Knut, you raise your hand. Yes, also a few comments um, to this. And, well, I think Eva had a lot of good points on this one. Um, I particularly like the one um, about you can't necess you can't always regulate something before it's a problem. And I'm sure that a lot of people would actually complain if you start regulating a lot of things that could be a problem <laughs> in the future because you waste your resources on this. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be able to plan in advance for what might happen. Right. Um, and then you have to act and regulate when it's possible, when there is room for it, right? And this is where we are right now. And then it's about not wasting your time, but try to get this right, um, prioritize it uh, instead of other things. Um, and also when it comes to the implementation, this is also what I talked about earlier about enforcement, yeah. right? Um, we have to ask ourselves, how can we do this in the best possible way? Uh, and on the GDPR, one big problem is that I'm not sure if you have equal protection in all member states when you have um, data protection agencies, the authorities in member states that do not have the resources. So how can we make sure that this, this goes better with an AI act and when we regulate other kind of technology? Uh, so this is absolutely something to have in mind. Um, do democracy or do we follow the pace nationally? I don't think so, but as mentioned, it's difficult, but also it's not necessarily possible um, in the sense that if every European, every parliament in EU member states and the EA for my part in Norway uh, were to try to regulate this on their own, it would be a mess. And also I think the outcome of every each and every of these regulations would not really be good. So this is something that has to be done on a European level. And again, this brings us back to federalism, I think, because the EU should not decide everything, but this is something that on the member state level couldn't necessarily be solved without actually speaking with each other. So on short term, um, on a national level, we have to communicate across between different countries, but on the longer term, it definitely needs a European framework to all of this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Knut. Actually, the EU is developing uh, so much, for example, the EU Prosecution Office, the, um, the, other, uh, the other pillars of uh, judiciary, uh, early, early I, I should say, judiciary power in EU. But actually, in this particular framework, considering EU also a free market, a common market, this kind of regulations and law enforcement uh, should be done in a in a both way, at European level, at national level, in order to place better the regulation and the safety for, for the people. Right. And also, yeah. another big point is the multilateral framework, because 
some of the issues and threats uh, uh, and artificial intelligence and general cybersecurity come from uh, outside Europe. So uh, on that, we don't have a reliable uh, international system, international framework that gives us uh, the sufficient space of, space of safety. So um, that's it, it's about our, you know, uh, uh, our um, last frontier on this topic. Mm. But what is really important is really to, to save the democratic process, ensure the democratic quality. But yes. what Knut said about the, um, uh, the GDPR, for example, the impossibility to have uh, the same level of protection is a European problem that should be dealt at European level in a way that we, uh, that, that we said, actually. Mm. Um, any other remarks from, from the audience? Mm. Mr. Wieland, we have, we have the floor. Hello, hi. Um, uh, so I wanted to perhaps to make two comments. So uh, Eva, you, you uh, sorry, I can't say Eva. So yes. you, you, <laughs> you, uh, you mentioned the EU, EU CERN for artificial intelligence. So just a uh, perhaps critical remark. I, I, I don't think, so CERN is really about fundamental research about um, uh, whereas in artificial intelligence, much of the fundamental research that drives now the development has already been made many years ago. So now it's more about, uh, I, or this is my, my impression from the, from the outside. And uh, so, and also the challenges that are coming or the questions about uh, ethical questions, these are not really questions about fundamental science or of or uh, it seems more about security and uh, on the one hand and on the other hand about about um, uh, ethics and yeah. as for the security issue perhaps what we need is not more research but more like a European center like a European NSA that that yeah. deals with threats that no single especially smaller, member states cannot uh, deal with. I mean, if there's a cyber attack on a small mem member state, uh, yeah. they don't have the means, to, I, I, I would imagine. I, I do yeah. not know, of course. But, and um, then another point, so, uh, uh, so someone raised the, the concern about all, all uh, about fakes and and how uh, how the electoral process can can uh, be um, disrupted by AI, but perhaps we one should uh, ma make this the point of the campaign or 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 part of the point of the campaign that that uh, what uh, uh, progressive uh, political forces trying to achieve is to fight exactly this. So part of the mm -hmm. electoral campaign should be about that, I, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the two things I wanted to say. Thanks. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Wolfgang. Any other points? Uh, um, yeah. I, just, I, I just wanted to explain one thing. This is on this CERN issue. Um, the CERN was the picture for a network of collaboration, more or less. It was not so much about fundamental um, elements that should be researched, but uh, of a Europe-wide network of experts. Because I was, uh, since I'm uh, part of a lot of discussions on these topics, I met people in Rome that discussed the same issues as the people in Vienna, but they never knew of each other. Or... Uh, then I met some uh, Dutch friends and they said, okay, they are discussing this and that. And I said, okay, yes, it's discussed in Vienna too. So this is what I meant with it. Um, a collaboration network of persons, especially when it comes to security issues. Because this is, as you said, 
uh, it's not only that small and medium enterprises or small entities in public ad administration would suffer from attacks, but also some uh, smaller member uh, member states in the European Union. So this needs a, really a collaboration um, to make our systems robust and secure. They have to develop kind of resilient collaboration networks to secure um, our critical infrastructure because this is still lacking. This is not AI uh, as a whole, but this is a part of security and AI that really uh, plays a crucial role and unfortunately will play a, a, a crucial role in the future. Huh? Thank you, Eva. Nota. Yeah, thank you for the comment. Just a short uh, remark uh, and connected to what you uh, said about um, security versus ethical questions. Uh, how I see it, this, what we have to, or where we have to find the answers, the, the big questions are, how should we balance security against fundamental rights that we have? This is the ethical question. So. Yeah. Yeah. When people feel insecure, they might say that, oh, we need more mass surveillance to make sure that our security is here. But then this will happen um, um, violating other fundamental rights. And we cannot afford this within the democracy. And this could happen in China if you have a social um, scoring system, for example. And I don't know, in America, there might be another way this will happen because you have big companies and almost no regulation. But this is where we have to find our European balance on these yeah. questions. Um, and it has to be communicated out why it's necessary to uh, not sacrifice our fundamental rights for more security. At the end of the day, we have to believe that we will be more secure when we preserve our democracies and our and our fundamental rights. Um, because there are no easy solutions to get the, the, the security we want. But we need an open public debate about this, because otherwise people might go to populist solutions where they go for security instead of fundamental rights. So I think this is a very important core question in all of this. Mm. And I, I'm not saying this is what was said, but I just wanted to add this because I think it wasn't added clearly before. Thank you, Knut, and that's a very crucial point. Uh, but I want to, to, to leave the floor to Alain for a, a quick comment. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. Um, I wanted just to say one thing. Uh, I'm sorry, I was not following very well uh, all the debates, but uh, my point is, uh, in fact, there is a general uh, education we must have as citizens, we must be used uh, to, to use intelligence artificial uh, uh, EIR uh, to control it. That means, in fact, it's a general problem. It's not specific to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to any, it's, it's like informatics, it's everywhere. At each level, the, the problem is the control. All the tools we have, all these tools and these ones are very sophisticated and are, they are going, we are not stopping that. But we must always be sure that the, the computer is not deciding for us because we control it. And there is, a, uh, on, on, my point, on my opinion, the point is we have to, uh, to address the, anyone, any citizen uh, to have this reflex in any case, for any in, in any place where this question is coming, human uh, must control the, the the computer and not be controlled by the computer at the end. This, which implies, of course, to 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 become an expert for what we are concerned by that, and for everyone at a general level, because effectively now it's at the level of the citizen. Personally, in my professional job, I was for a long time uh, concerned by expert system. It's just uh, another phase of, of a general uh, problem. We have always had uh, in, in, uh, in evolution uh, with productivity on, uh, on new tools. And uh, it's another dimension, but 
fundamentally, we, we must, as citizens, have the control of it. And at each level, we have uh, European or individual when we are uh, dependent of the decision of, of, uh, of, of the computer, but we must control it. Of course, it's easier to say than to do because it's very difficult to define uh, exactly how, how, uh, how we can control effectively. The only thing is we must, must have a culture on that, in citizen culture from that, and uh, for each problem uh, of production, uh, security, and all that, it's always the same discussion and always the same problem to control it. The, the computer must not control us. But the first uh, general uh, we have seen was a, a crack uh, uh, with a, um, La Bourse, um, Market Stock exchange. Uh, yes, exchange. Uh, it was. It's going so fast that only computers can react. And at the end of the reaction, it was a big crisis. Okay, that's it. That's one point. When you're in, in your car, you let the car uh, drive for you, and uh, you can have a crash. So sorry, uh, it's a general consideration, but I wanted to say it. thank you. Thank you, Alain. Actually, uh, philosophy investigates in the past artificial intelligence just on that when we need uh, an artificial help, to, to be honest on that. That is a long question, even raised uh, in nowadays by American uh, artist uh, unions, uh, because they are using, or they fear to, they fear that the companies use uh, AI creations instead of, a, of artist creation, writing creations. So that, that's a huge situation that encompasses ethics and culture, of course. Um, Eva and uh, and uh, Knuta, uh, Knuta, uh, a comment on it. Well, I, I'm not. I don't have too many thoughts of it um, quite yet. But I think it's. I'm just curious how we will solve this um, about um, when people create something. Uh, who does it own to but also how can we trust anything that is out there that it's, it was human made or not we have yeah. to find answers to this but yeah i'm just curious about how yeah. we can do it of yeah. course thank you eva yeah i think this will be the most important um uh, tool that should be developed that we uh, try to e uh, identify uh, fake and deep fakes um because this is um um, one of the tools that could save us for um, um, in in a sense, because if you can't trust any news anymore, where do you end up? So, um, of course, people were always lying and lied to each other, and uh, this was a problem. But it was easy. It was it was it, it was easily to see also in a sense. Huh? But uh, or to find out. But now it is no more possibility in the room to really find out if you get uh, a video. Uh, is it real? Is it a fake? Does this person really speak out for that? And so on and so on. I think this is one of the the really uh, the things that I really am concerned about. Um, since we still do not have means to tackle that, education might be a good thing. And I need, uh, I think we really need more uh, literacy, more digital literacy for our population. And here, I do not have the problem with the young ones, but with my generation, because they trust in pictures, because they learned to trust in pictures. And then they are confronted with fake news and, and deep fakes that are absolutely realistic. How to educate them, how to reach them, how to teach them mechanisms, how to recognize, how to see what um, should be the next step if you discover something like that. Because in the election campaigns, I'm sure there will be a lot of those deep fakes uh, on the way and uh, we do not have the means yet to really 
uh, uh, get it back or uh, get it get it cancelled or whatsoever. We do not really have the tools up to now. Education is only one point, but you don't reach those, let's say, over 30 <laughs> years old that really um, are used to trust in pictures, in videos, and so on and so on. And this is uh, something that is a deeply philosoph a philosophic question. If you can't trust anymore any news that you get, it's getting really difficult within the political sphere how to make decisions if you can't trust anymore something which was not life. Huh? So um, I think this would be a big, big necessity to make at least people aware that these things exist and that they have to do some research on persons and so on and so on before believing what they have been seeing, even uh, when, especially when it's very surprising. The whole thing about um, intellectual property rights, I mean, the discussion about that is, um, was started in 2010. Huh? So it's already 10, 12 years old. And um, the um, companies then and the, the, the big editors blocked every reform of copyright. And now they are paying the price for it because since there was no adjustment and, and, and um, uh, no appropriate so uh, solution in the time of internet, now they are standing in the rain with nothing. And this is, this is of course a problem. And this, we did not talk today about the further uh, societal consequences that uh, uh, a spread of the, uh, these issues will bring. Because you have the writers, you have the actors right now endangered. But what really will come within the next time and the systems for that are already on the table is administration. A lot of administrative jobs will be lost within the next years, because all public entities will digitize uh, uh, administrative procedures. And this is, I mean, most people here are men, but um, this is what touches upon female jobs. So we will have a big, big problem with um, female working places, which also will create enormous problems for society. Because these, this is a, the, the the first thing was robot robotics for male work, let's say. So the classical thinking always. Now it's administration where a lot of women are working, and now it's touching upon them. So I think um, here we will face very different problems too, and with all this loss of working places we also lost out on taxes. And since our tax systems are based on work at most, we will have financial problems. So this is only to address one of the challenges that we are facing apart from um, uh, what we were talking about today. Um, but we are living in a time of enormous changes and um, well, I'm old, but I try to follow up. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, Eva. Thank you also for your gender, a little bit gender high on that. Um, mm -hmm. I want to uh, raise, uh, la leave the, briefly the, the floor to, to Alain and then Knut for two both questions to uh, answer to, to Alain and to, to raise a point on that. Alain, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, just about the jobs. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, it's not new. Uh, jobs are changing. We, we will need more jobs to control computers and less to do things. It's a progress somewhere. The only problem is to have the control on it for me. And it's an illusion if we think we can avoid uh, to, uh, to change the, the way we are, we are working, of course. Uh, AI is going to help us for working 
the, the problem is a control and the problem is ethics, of course. And uh, I agree with all what you said, but about the jobs, uh, we have to we have to evaluate uh, in our jobs. And effectively, there are a lot of jobs uh, for controlling computer and more and more computer. It's a general term of what I, I mean. But exactly. uh, don't be don't be don't worry too much because we we need a lot of uh, of of job for controlling computers. Thank you, Alain. Knute, you have a floor. Um, and on this with jobs, we have already heard for many, many years that digitalization will take a lot of jobs away, automatization, exact, et cetera. And still we see that more people are employed than ever. And in many member states in the European Union, the um, unemployment rate has not been lower. And of course, this doesn't say that there will not be problems in the future, but we will also find new ways to work, for example, for some young people, influencers. We cannot all be that, but that is one of many things that we could never think about just 10 or 15 years ago, right? Um, not the best example, but you get the point. Um, and then I wanted to say that one thing my generation might help with is to come up with more critical thinking, right, on social media, how to use it. And maybe we should have more um, funded programs on this, not only having it voluntarily happening in the society, but that the um, um, government and people responsible should also uh, make sure that uh, all parts of the population get more knowledge about this and more education on it. Uh, because it is a huge problem. Well, it was funny for me and my generation when our parents and grandparents came into social media and did stupid stuff and shared fake news in the beginning. <laughs> but it's a huge problem for society in the longer run. And this is what we have to combat. And then just one last comment, and that is um, before the European elections now, um, in some ways, I feel like it's going in the wrong direction. For example, uh, with X or Twitter, after Elon Musk took it over and made it his personal um, social media toy, pet, something like that, um, he can just change anything overnight with this many users. And should that be possible? And one thing he did was to remove the verified accounts where you could actually know that this is a trustworthy account Um and now you can no longer see it. And when one man that is very rich can do this, then how much harm can be done by a lot of people with a lot of wealth um, or by an authoritarian regime? So this is really something also to, to be aware of and trying to find bed, better solutions for in the future because it has hurt a lot more than it has helped when it comes to trusting the news. Thank you, Knutta. Thank you so much and thank you all for your very interesting points. I think that this kind of debate implies uh, a lot of responsibility for us as citizens, for the lawmakers, but in general for us as a person to relate with technology uh, in a way that is not harmful for, for, for us. And for the, I mean, I would say for the generation after us, to be honest. Um, I want to really uh, thank you all the speakers, uh, from Jeff Europe, from the board of Jeff Europe. Thank you so much, Eva from the UF Austria. It's uh, really grateful to have to, to have joined you, join us today. Also, Brando Benefei, who has been our very, uh, very um, nice guest today uh, and all of you for your participation here as audience uh, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, share uh, our some some of your time to to discuss about this very important topic and we'll be back on this on this one uh, with, probably with a report that raised and uh, make a synthesis of all questions and issues raised thank you so much everyone and uh, thank you to the Secretariat for the support and have a nice night. Thank you all. Night, thank you. Good night. Good night.